Hi, I'm Paul and this is Izzy and we're from Black Bee Honey. Black Bee Honey was founded in 2017 to showcase the best of British honey. Chris and I, the founders, started beekeeping in London about 10 years ago, putting hives on the rooftops and in gardens in cities, uh, labelling the honey by the postcode where the hives were located, which was really popular, but we wanted to grow the business and expand to showcase honeys from around the UK. Uh, we, we're now based in Froome in Somerset. We still have London hives and we're here in Warminster Farm where we look after a couple of hives for Peter just outside of Wells. And we also have an apiary in Montacute, Somerset, as well as working with beekeepers all around the country. Um, so I'm Izzy. I joined just over a year ago now. Um, since then, I've been put through my beekeeping course um, and now help to look after nine hives like these ones here. Uh, over in Montacute um, and as well as that I take care of the sales and sustainability side of things at the, at the business. So we're going to show you how we would inspect a beehive. So we use a smoker to smoke the hive entrance, just a few puffs which circulates around the hive um, and that just pacifies the bees. So they'll be eating a bit of honey which pacifies them and also bees communicate with a pheromone and one of them is an emergency pheromone which they might release when you open the hive so it just means that they can't communicate with the pheromones at that point and so there's much less chance of them becoming agitated when you open the hive and once we've smoked we leave it for a minute and then we're okay to open it so we take off the, take off the roof put that on the floor and then you've got the crown board here and this is the beekeeper's best friend which is the hive tool which she used to take all the hive parts off and you can hear it's quite sticky. So bees use propolis from trees to stick everything together and they don't like gaps in things. So they'll start to um, stick that together there. You can see where they've used propolis. So the hive tool allows you to easily um, separate the hive parts. So this is a super. So this is where the honey is stored in the hive. Um, so these frames will just have um, honey on. So if I just show you a frame here. This is a super frame. Um, so the bees will just be storing and capping honey in this top box. And then you have a, a queen excluder, which is this green thing here, which separates the super and the brood. So if we take this off, there we have the brood box. So within here we have all of the, the uh, brood of the hive, so the eggs and the larva and the queen. So the queen can only stay in that brood box. You can't get higher than that because of this she can't get through the queen excluder here because the the holes are too small so only the worker bees the female bees can come and go into the supers that's why you only get honey in the in the top boxes above so we'll just give them another little smoke and take the queen excluder off and to access those we just take out this outer frame which is known as a dummy board um, which just gives you a bit more room to manoeuvre so you don't harm any of the bees when you're taking out the frames. So there's 11 frames in the brood box, all full of bees. If we take out one of these frames, I can show you so that's just Full of bees and there's there's eggs there from from the queen is laying bees that will be going through w winter with her um, so when we're inspecting a, a hive we'll be going through each frame checking all the bees making sure the queen's there making sure she's laying checking for signs of disease and also signs of swarming. You wouldn't really get that at this time of year, but earlier in the summer, the bees can be swarming. So we're checking to see if, if there's any signs of that, which is uh, when they start building new queen cells. 
Um, and if that happens, we can perform what's known as an artificial swarm, where we'll split the hive in two. Because if a hive decides they want to swarm, which is the way that the hive will actually reproduce, um, you can't really stop it. So the best way of, of doing that without losing your bees in a, a tree somewhere nearby is to um, split the hive yourself. So um, you, you leave a new queen to emerge in this box and then you'll split the old queen into a new box. Um, but you can see, if I show you here, there's some capped brood. So that's be bees that are yet to emerge. And there's eggs and larvae in there that you might not be able to see, but that's um, all the brood which, which will go through the winter with the queen because it's obviously um, coming towards the end of the season now. So the colonies a lot smaller, there's probably about um, 10,000, 20,000 bees maximum in this hive. Um, in, the, in the summer, in the peak of the summer, you can have up to about 50 or 60,000 bees in, it, in a hive. So there's a, bit, there's a bit more brood here, you can see in the, in the middle. And we're generally looking to find, to find the queen. If we don't find the queen, as long as we've seen eggs, we know that she's there. Because with, without the queen, the hive isn't viable. Um, and you're in tr trouble if you don't have a, have a laying queen inside the hive. So here on the, the frames here in the cells, you can see that there's uh, the larva that hasn't yet been sealed over. So um, the egg turns into a larva, which is fed and then sealed over, and then that'll pupate into a bee. It takes about three weeks. And the bees that emerge at this time of year will overwinter with the queen. Oh, there's the queen there. So she's a lot, a lot larger than the, um, the workers, the female bees and the drones, the male bees. She's got a much longer, a much longer body. And she just spends every day just laying eggs in the hive, <clears throat> looking for empty cells, laying new eggs. Um, and at the peak of the of laying in the summer she can be laying up to about 2,000 eggs a day. Um, at this time of year it's obviously a lot less because the hive will contract over winter. Um, <clears throat> and the honey bee is the only bee that actually overwinters as a colony. Bumblebees have nests in the summer but over the winter the queens will just hibernate and they, they abandon the nests. That's why the honey bee is so good at foraging for honey and storing it because they they need a lot of honey to keep them through the winter so one thing we're doing at this time of year is also just checking how much stores they've got in the hive um, this year there hasn't been a huge amount of nectar around um, so what we've found is sometimes we have to supplement the the hives with a bit of um, sugar syrup just to um, give them more stores because otherwise they they might not make it through the winter um, but you if you see these frames, these are, these are all the worker bees. So the, the hive is predominantly made up of, of female worker bees and they have, a, they have various jobs in the hive. So they'll be cleaning, cleaning cells, feeding the young. Uh, when they get a bit older, they'll be going out and foraging and scouting for nectar and pollen sources. Um, and you'll see this, there's, there's newly, newly emerged bees that are known as the nurse bees, which clean and feed and then the um, the older ones which are known as the the foragers which who are, who will be out flying so yeah we just go through through the whole box checking checking for any signs of disease as well there's loads of different diseases that you can find in in beehives and different natural treatments that we can use to help them if they do have a have any disease um, so we're keeping our eyes peeled for that <coughs> You can see over here you've got um, capped honey. So this is stores that they're, they've got uh, on the sort of outer side of the brood for um, keeping them through the winter. And then obviously there's a bit more in the, in the super there, which would just be honey as well. And they'll be storing nectar, which they reduce the water content down from about 80 to 20%, which makes it honey. That's then capped over with wax, and then they're also storing pollen. So they're the two food sources that they need. And that's about it. So we just uh, 
put the dummy frame on the other side of the brood box. Put the queen excluder back on. Just put a bit of smoke on there just to encourage the bees to go back down into the brood box. And the super back on. And the crown board. And that's the roof. So our main apiary in Somerset is in Montacute, but we also look after hives here with Peter. Um, Peter's has a farm in Warminster near Wells um, and he asked us to put a couple of hives here uh, for a couple of reasons. One of them was uh, to have beekeeping workshops which hopefully will be running from next spring um, but he was very interested in learning about bees so I've been here um, most weeks over the summer with Peter and we've been looking inside hives and I've been teaching him the basics of, of beekeeping. Um, and hopefully next year Peter will be able to be inspecting the hives himself. Um, and do you want to talk a little bit about well, the, I've the found it. I found it, well first of all the beekeeping is, I found it entirely fascinating learning all the different things, all the bizarre experiences we've had, you know, finding bits of pollen on the backs of the bees, uh, some red pollen, trying to work out where that's come from somewhere on the farm, some purple, we've, we've got some lavender, maybe it's come from that. But you know, the, old, the whole advantages and the benefits of keeping bees here at the farm where we've got a big kitchen garden, there's, you know, a real, I see it as a real benefit, an environmental benefit, a benefit for us here at the farm, not to mention the production of the honey, which I'm looking forward to next year. we have been pretty excited about looking after them this year, but uh, there's just a little bit of a taste of honey. But next year, we're looking forward to doing a bit more with it, aren't we Paul? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so the, the hives were, put in quite late in the year so um, it meant that we weren't able to extract any honey but um, next year obviously with the hives already in place it means that we should we should see uh, the first Wormitster farm honey crop. So we've got several honey varieties um, including this one here is a spring honey so decided to um, split the some of the honeys into the seasonal range so we've got the spring here um, summer and autumn um, the spring and summer are both from uh, hives in Exmoor National Park in Somerset. Um, so the spring is predominantly um, rapeseed oil um, that the bees have foraged on. It's quite light, um, it's called soft set honey, so a good one for spreading on your toast. Um, we've got the summer one, which I haven't got with me, but that's more of a runny honey, um, also from Exmoor. Um, that one is a mixture of wildflowers that the, um, the bees have foraged on, um, so bramble, hawthorn, things like that. Um, and then the autumn one isn't from Somerset, but that's from the um, Yorkshire moors. Um, it's predominantly heather, so very good, um, very good for you. It's got strong antimicrobial properties, um, which are all measured by something called total activity. Um, we've, which we've popped on the top of the jars. So this one and this su the summer, um, they both scored above 10 um, and the autumn was plus 15. And then our heather honey, which is also from Exmoor um, in Somerset, that scored um, plus 20. So the total activity is a way of comparing the level of antimicrobial strengths to other honeys, such as Manuka honey, um, which has a UM, UMO, rating or MGO rating. Um, anything above 10 is said to have significant antimicrobial strengths. Um, so we know that it's really good for you as all raw honey is. Um, we've also got um, our London honey, which um, is from hives in East London, um, which is also a summery wildflower honey. And then we've got a couple from um, Norfolk, ones called the Seaside Honey, which is um, from bees foraging on sea lavender. Um, that's got quite a salty taste, that's also runny honey. Um, and then we've also got festive honey, um, which tastes quite medicinal. Uh, bees have foraged on ivy, um, and yeah, that's got quite an interesting little taste. 
Um, and then we've also got our new Helpful Honey, which um, is the first batch from our Montague Hives. Um, so we call it Helpful Honey because um, each month, 10% of um, the sales from that honey go to a different charity. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's all of our honeys. That's a runny honey as well, really delicious. So grab some of that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed um, watching and learning about the hives and the bees today. And we really hope to see you soon.